Hey everybody, <clears throat> um, I wanted to do a, just a quick video, um, I'm not a video person just cause, um, I, I just don't, but, um, I wanted to talk to you guys about, um, the concept of being a false convert and the reason why I wanted to talk about it is because, um, I can, I can relate. Most people are like, well, What's a false convert? We don't hear a lot of people talking about false converts <clears throat> in today's church, probably because most people in the church are false converts. Um, but just a little background, you know, um, I grew up in the church, like most people, you know, going to church nine days a week, if there was a such thing. And I remember that I ended up joining the church i think i was 11 and becoming baptized but it had very little to do with me having a true conversion experience and it was more like a rite of passage it was more like well you're 11 now you know when are you going to get baptized so that you can take communion and um you know get personalized uh, offering envelopes because you know once you do that you can tithe um this is how i was taught so I remember walking up to the front during the call to discipleship and um, nervous, not because, I, I, long story short, it was just a very scary situation. But I remember I did that, took the discipleship classes and um, got baptized maybe six to eight weeks after that um, and then was given the right hand of fellowship. During this whole process, um, I never, no one ever had a conversation with me about what it meant to be born again. Um, no one asked, really, you know, asked me if I understood what I was doing because it really wasn't explained to me. Um, I, I was not convicted of my sin and sorrowful of my sin. And as a result, I walked forward. I pretty much was just doing what was expected of me. Um, fast forward. After that, you know, I continued to live life as a hellion, as a sinner, you know, through college, high school and college. And I remember moving down to Atlanta um, and attending Spelman College. And the summer of my freshman year, being invited to New Birth, um, where Bishop Eddie Long is pastor, and just rededicating my life to Christ at that moment, not because once again, I had a true conversion experience and was born again, but simply, honestly, I'm gonna just keep it real. I was enamored with the whole mega church lifestyle. I had never been to a mega church before. I mean, I had seen probably what the Crystal Cathedral on TV or Fred K. Price's church, um, ever increasing faith on TV, but I never knew um, within close proximity that black people had churches with large numbers. Um, I, I had never seen that many people or that many, um, affluent African Americans worshiping together. So I was really enamored with the whole mega church lifestyle. I was enamored with the prosperity gospel message. Um, because here I am, I'm 18, I'm in college. I'm hoping four years after this, you know, after this process, I'm going to have a lot of money. Um, and I'm like, okay, well, granted, let me rededicate my life to Christ so that I can kind of take advantage of some of the benefits of, of, of this, this God thing. It really wasn't because I was broke up over my sin. Um, there was no repentance. There was no faith or fruit in keeping with repentance. It was literally going through the motions, doing the church thing, um, dancing on the praise team, thinking that was going to earn me right standing with God. Um, there was really no turning from sin. Um, sin was ever abounding in, in my life during my college years. I just, it was just a hot mess. Um, you know, granted, there may have been some sins that I participated in where I felt bad and I knew it was a sin, but I wasn't sorrowful over my sin. But during this whole process, I still identified myself as a Christian. And if we were having a conversation where faith came up, obviously I wouldn't affirm Islam or Buddhism. I would affirm Christianity because in my mind, I thought I was a Christian. 
this is the problem and this is why we have so many false converts in churches today and no one's talking about it because most people fit into this category most people have been going to church their entire life and they do the church thing and they do the church thing well they know how to speak church speak they know the church lingo and the church um, jargon they speak fluent church and christianese um, but they have never been born again they can um, post scriptures on Facebook all the time. Um, they may even quote words from their fam you know, their favorite pastor or sermon because, ooh, that was deep and I need to Facebook or tweet that. But there is no fruit in keeping with repentance. Um, you know, then we have the category of people who live like a hellion and then one day they're in church or then one day they get this notion that, you know, I need to rededicate my life back to Christ. And so they come to church and then during the altar call or the invitation to Christ and discipleship, they get up and um, then they're taken into a back room. They say a prayer. They're given a packet of some, some literature and they're told, um, welcome to the family of God. Um, once again, they've been lied to once again and they've, given, they've been given a false sense of security. And I've seen this happen time and time again. People do this because I've done it probably at least three times. They do it and then they go home and they do life. And then when the cares of life come, um, they abandon the faith because the faith never took any roots. Um, these people have never really truly repented of their sin. Um, they've never confessed their sin. They don't even recognize the, the, the depth of their depravity. I did not realize how wicked and depraved I was until maybe three, three years ago. I'll say that I didn't realize how wicked and depraved I was till about three years ago. So that means my entire, throughout my entire childhood, adult years, and well into my 30s, I professed to be a Christian, but I was not because I was not born again. I had never been regenerated. I didn't have a new heart. I had the same heart that I've always had. Why? Because I could easily practice sin and not give it a second thought. Or if I did, I was like, yeah, I feel pretty bad. I'll probably, you know, God forgive me. Um, but I didn't really feel sorrowful. I figured I could get a pass because, you know, for the most part, you know, I was a pretty decent person. Um, but this is the problem. Um, people getting their life together, especially during this Easter season or rededicating their life back to Christ. Um, those terms and that concept is not biblical. Um, and I, and I, I, at first I was going to caution myself and not say what I'm about to say, but I kind of have to say it because I hear people say, well, you can't really say that. My bad. Um, you really can't, you really can't say that. Um, pe oh, what I was saying was you really can't say that all oh, people are just backsliding. And I'm going to tell you why. The concept of a person backsliding or being in a state of back, backslidingness is not a word. But being in a persistent state of being backslid is not biblical. Because scripture affirms and tells us that we are dead to sin. I'm not saying that Christians don't sin. You probably sinned yesterday. But born again people, people who have been regenerated and born of the spirit, do not have a life that is patterned with sin. Meaning, I can't call myself a born again Christian and I am living in a perpetual state of unrepentant sin. You're not a Christian. There's no such thing as being a little bit Christian and then way over the top Christian and then maybe somewhere in the middle where we put the backsliding people somewhere in the middle. No, 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 no. The Bible does not speak of such a person. So either you are where, where Christ is Lord of your life and your life is submitted to him and what he wants and what he commands or your life is governed by you and you alone. You do what you want to do when you want to, when it feels good to you, when you do it and you think about the consequences later. When Jesus is Lord over your life, when you have submitted to the Lordship of Christ, you are conscious 
of everything you do because everything you do is filtered through the lens of what does God have to say about this? What has he said in his word about this? If I do this, is this wrong? People who don't do that need to question the authenticity of the profession of faith that they have made. I'm sorry. Um, I can say this because I was one of those people who I'm like, oh, I'm just backsliding right now or I backslid. I mean, you're backsliding like every three to six months or every year. You're not a Christian. You are what's called a false convert. And so that's the purpose of this video is for you to examine yourself. Are you a false convert? Because the thing is, if you are a false convert, you cannot inherit eternal life. Your name is not in the book of life. If you are a false convert, you will die in your sins if you do not repent, believe in the gospel, which is put your faith in Jesus, trust in his finished work on the cross, and at that point, you receive his Holy Spirit. No, there's not some experience where you fall on the floor and speak in some tongues. No, when you receive his spirit, at that point, your heart is made new. You're given a new heart. So you don't do what your heart wants to do anymore. You got a new heart. So you have new affections. You have new things that you like and old things that you hate. And when you sin, you will feel sorrowful over your sin. Um, there's no doubt about that. So... Hold on, sorry y'all, I'm multitasking, I'm working. No worries, I will. Anyway, um, I mean, it's, it's that, it's that simple. I, I'm not making this video so I can condemn people. That's really not what this is about. Actually, I want to offer a solution. The solution to this is, is, is there are several solutions to this. One, more people need to talk about this. We need to talk about all of the false converts that are in the church. We need to have an honest conversation with ourselves and with others, our friends and our family. And we all need to examine ourselves to see if we are in the faith. Two, we need to preach the gospel. Y'all... I ain't gonna I ain't gonna get teary eyed, but if it wasn't for and this person who he knows who he is, if it wasn't for the passionate, abrasive online ministry of Pastor Seiko Woods, I probably would still be a false convert to this day for the simple fact that he is the only one that I ever heard articulate with clarity the true gospel, meaning you are a sinner. And I don't care what you call yourself, but you are a sinner. And you need a savior. And it's not enough to say that you are a Christian. But if you bear no fruit in keeping with repentance, you are not saved. If you have not repented, from your sin, which is one, recognize you're a sinner, put your faith in Christ. And if you're not growing after that, growing in sanctification, sanctification to where your life produces good work, everything you've been doing up until this point has been a waste of time. Um, it wasn't until I heard him talk about the sovereignty of God as it relates to man and the Holy Spirit's work and salvation. It wasn't until I heard him talk about any of those things that I actually, my eyes became open. I went to the word and then something actually happened. Um, I was given a new heart. It wasn't until someone preached the gospel that the Holy Spirit stepped in and did his work. Um, so we have to preach the gospel. That means we, it's, y'all, this gospel is offensive to those who are perishing. I was perishing and what Seiko was saying was highly offensive. One, I didn't like his delivery. Um, I, in my mind, I'm like, 
there is no way you're going to preach the truth to people the way that you're saying it because it doesn't sound loving. It doesn't feel good what you're saying. But do you not know that the Bible, which is basically, he wasn't telling me his feelings. He was telling me the truth. It's a sword and it's called a sword because it cuts. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. So that means on this end and this end, it cuts. It, it just, it's going to cut. When you cut, you bleed. When you cut, it burns. It hurts. That's what the word does. And what he was saying, if he had sang it like you sing, Mary had a little lamb. Or if he said it the way he actually said it, it wouldn't have made any difference. Because the bottom line is, I was perishing. And the truth of what, was, what he was saying was offensive to me. So we have to get over the notion that, you know, you got to meet people where they are and just be nicer with it. The Bible says no such thing. When you can find me in scriptures that says meet people where they are, then perhaps I can, I can affirm that. But the Bible doesn't tell us to do that. The Bible just tells us to preach the gospel to all nations, baptizing them. The Bible tells us that we are to refute false doctrine with that, with that which is true. So the only solution to this, this problem of false converts is to preach the gospel. Share the truth with your family and your friends. They may not like you. Um, you'll probably lose a lot, a lot of friends. Um, and your family might stop talking to you. Um, but my Bible tells me that, you know, you got to count the cost. Um, there are plenty of people who heard jesus preach the gospel and they were following him and then it got to a point where they were like this dude's words are too harsh and they followed him no more like they just was like that's too much we got to count the cost um if you haven't counted the cost um if you're not willing to forsake everything particularly anything that this world has to offer for the cause of christ you ain't worthy the bible says this so that's really all I wanted to say. I really wanted to talk about this concept, these false converts. And I wanted to ask you, are you one? Are you one of those false converts? One of those people who got saved when you were younger, did the church thing, and now you simply attend church because it is the thing of the thing to do. You, you know you're supposed to attend church, but there's a huge disconnect between why you attend church, why you should attend church, and why you actually attend church. Um, you know, look at your life. Do you act, are you actively living a life of unrepentant sin? Only you can answer that. I know I was, um, I was, well, he's my husband now, but I was shacking with my then boyfriend. Um, I was in the club weekly. Um, actually I met my husband in the club. I was in the club weekly. Um, what else did I do? Lie, you know, in my mind, they weren't big lies, but like, for example, something as simple as, you know, somebody texts you and like, girl, let's hang out. Instead of me just saying, no, I don't want to, I'll just lie and make something up or I have something to do. That, that's a lie. That's, that's sin. I mean, to you, it's not that big deal, but to God, God hates sin. I would lie. You know what I'm saying? I was a murderer. You know, um, I was a thief. Um, you know, it ain't pretty, but I, I was all those things. My mouth was foul. You know, I didn't cuss like a sailor, um, but, you know, a, a, a profanity could slip out my mouth, you know, and I just, especially if I thought it added the right little bit of seasoning to the conversation. Oh, absolutely. Yes, profanity would come out my mouth. Um, all those things, you know, I, I would watch profane television and didn't feel convicted at all. I used to be a big fan of Real Housewives of Atlanta. Um, yeah, I used to watch that, Love and Hip Hop, uh, well, when it first came out, Keeping Up, the, I mean, just filth. Um, I could sit and watch it and it just be like, it's just entertainment. It's nothing wrong with that. Do that and not think twice.
It's like whatever. Um, so yeah, you know, all of those things, those are not marks. True Christians, true, true, true people who've been converted and born again, regenerated, you don't do stuff like that. Um, you know what I'm saying? You just, you just don't. How'd you treat other people? You know what I'm saying? Did you think more highly of yourself? Did you put, you know what I'm saying? Did you, were you loving your neighbor? Or not necessarily your neighbor, just loving the brethren. Never like church folk. Oh gosh, no, mm -mm. Go to church, but didn't really care too much for church people. Um, I love church. I, I don't love church people now, um, but I love my brothers and sisters in Christ. People that um, I don't really need to know a lot about them, but they've exhibited the fruit um, of someone who's been born again. I love those people. Um, it's nothing like meeting another saint. You feel like you found a long lost brother. Well, that's like your cousin. Um, I love, I love, the, I love going to church now. It's not a chore. It's not like I'm going and it's check, got that done Sunday. Let's go watch football. It's not like that no more. I, I, I get there. I want to worship God in spirit and in truth. I love the public reading of his word. I love singing songs that are theologically and biblically accurate that exalt Christ. Um, don't like the man-centered song. I don't even listen. I don't even listen to gospel. I'm not hating people that listen to the gospel station, but there's nothing really on there worth listening to these days just because most of the music is man-centered. But I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying these things because they you need to evaluate yourself. You need to examine yourself. And um, I bring this message to you in love, not in a spirit of self-righteousness. Because, like Paul said, I was the chief of sinners. Um, so it's, it's not that at all. And I didn't just get my life together. And now that I got my life together, I'm on a soapbox. First of all, I couldn't fix my life. There's nothing. I just, no one has that ability. Salvation is of the Lord. It is a supernatural work of the Holy Spirit. There's nothing I could have done to fix myself. And if you think that's the spirit in which I'm coming at you, you don't know Bible. Once again, false convert. If you got into this word, um, the bottom, the thing is, if you try to read scripture and you've not been converted, a lot of it won't make sense to you. And um, it just won't. It's like foolishness. So that's really all I wanted to say. Share the gospel. Preach the gospel um, to your friends and your family. And um, be blessed. Bye.